from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of Red Hat Summit 2020, brought to you by Red Hat. Welcome back. I'm Stu Miniman, and this is the Cube's coverage of Red Hat Summit 2020, the seventh year we've been covering uh, the event. Of course, uh, one of the differentiators this year is it is a virtual event. Uh, we're bringing uh, Red Hat executives, customers, and partners from where they are around their globe to this digital event, and really happy to bring back one of our CUBE alumni is also one of the keynote speakers. He's got a new role, uh, but uh, lots of uh, technology to share. Matt Hicks, the SVP of Product and Technologies with Red Hat. Uh, Matt, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, normally we'd all get together, you and I are even geographically, uh, you know, relatively close to each other, but of course uh, today, uh, as we've, we've said many times, we are together apart. So thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thanks Thanks for having me. All right, so, uh, you know, compared to some, say at, you know, uh, the, the company that owns Red Hat, IBM, you're a relatively short timer uh, with Red Hat. You've only been there uh, for 14 years, Matt. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we've talked to you many times, OpenShift, one of the big things we talk about with you uh, over the last few years, you're one of the founding members of that team. Um, but before we get into it, just, you've got a new role, uh, you know, the, the, the product piece, as we said, you're kind of stepping up, filling in for the shoes that, that Paul has, uh, as Paul now set, steps up to the CEO role. So uh, tell us a little bit about what that means for, for you and, and your, uh, uh, your organization. Yeah, sure. So um, you're right. I, I used to run an engineering for Red Hat, and now I have the, um, the scope of engineering and the business and our support organization. So Paul's previous role, and it's um, it's a great opportunity. I'm excited about it. You mentioned I've been at Red Hat 14 years. I was actually at IBM prior, so the combination uh, is getting pretty, pretty significant there. But it's, it's just the neat opportunity. I love uh, being able to to focus on the entire portfolio, focus on how it's impacting customers, especially right now. Like this is a uh, tricky time right now for a lot of customers. And I think Red Hat has, you know, we're doing our best to make sure we have that value for them. Um, just to sort of get through the the crisis and and pinch for them. Yeah, uh, absolutely, Matt. Um, you know, usually uh, when when we're looking at a keynote, it's you know celebrating some new announcement. You know, talking about the culmination of these things. Uh, and you know, there, there's a real effort, of course, to set a nice balanced tone here. Uh, of course, you've got lots of you know critical companies that rely on on Red Hat technologies, on your partner solutions uh, to to make sure things work. So. You know, bring us in a little side, you know, side to basically the organization and, you know, how you're helping your customers, you know, in these challenging times. Yeah, I, I know this year we, we didn't make a big push and PR hoopla of all, all the work. We're really proud of that work, but it just, it wasn't the right time to, to have that focus on product releases. That said, if you look at our, our customer base, they're pretty split right now. We have a... A large part of our customer base, they are folks on just weathering the storm right now. And a lot of that work is it's cost savings, it's efficiency, it's actually uh, doubling down on their data centers where they've got to go back to things that they own. And um, down that side, we've, you know, we've thrown a whole host of efforts at that from extending our support services. Uh, we've gone through extending our product life cycle so customers don't get pinned and having to do an upgrade right now. Um, we're working with Ansible and with RHEL just in, in how we can help customers save and get through it sort of in the way that they want. On the other side, though, take uh, some industries, whether they're developing a vaccine or shipping, one of those, they're exploding. Like they need to scale and push. And we're making sure that we didn't hold back any technology because the toughest thing would be to say, well, uh, let's take in OpenShift. We have um, new serverless capabilities or pipelines, we didn't want to take any of those pieces away from a customer that might be needing to scale 500% right now. But it, it is a, it's a challenging time. We sort of have helping customers is on either end of a really, really wide spectrum. And the good news though, we have, I think we have good solutions on both to help them through, but it's, it is a unique experience for me. And um, as long as I've been in the industry, I haven't haven't quite seen this much of a uh, a divide. 
Yeah, it, it, it's really, uh, you know, Matt, I think back to, uh, you know, I, w I was working in the tech vendor community back when 9-11 happened and some of the rallying of the community. Um, but this has a personal impact for everyone. It's, you know, 9-11, it was kind of everybody went home for a day and then rallied the troops. You didn't make a big deal of it, but you made sure you helped those customers. Today, this has such a, a wide impact and yeah, as you said, uh, you know, very, uh, you know, unique time that we're living in here. Um, one of the messages you talked about in your keynote uh, is was really emphasizing a message we've heard for Red Hat for a number of years, talking about how uh, your solutions really go everywhere. Um, and even more than ever, so some of the stories you hear about where uh, technology is accelerating, of course, things like work from home, um, but also customers that are doing digital transformations or have been looking at cloud adoption, sometimes those things, they need to move through some of the last few steps even faster because they can't touch the gear or they can't access stuff or I need to get that automation going even faster so that we can leverage it. So help us walk through a little bit, you know, where where your technology pieces are, uh, you know, OpenShift uh, and some of the other technologies uh, that, that are so critically important for customers uh, today. Yeah, no, you, you touched on a lot of areas and I would say we, we probably saw this start and it's certainly been amplified in just worldwide importance with telco. So um, telecom providers, as they push towards things like 5G, it's not, it's not the traditional, like you have one data center type play and that's what you control. And whether you call this edge or anything else, it really, you have these uh, multiple tiers of infrastructure and they run at massive scale. And so they wanted one technology platform that could run you know, as close to the user as possible and uh, run in a bunch of different form factors and footprints um, also. And that's where we really started working with the telecom providers on OpenShift and taking some of the experience. You know, we, we certainly work a lot with them with OpenStack on core networks. But as things got closer to the edge, that push to OpenShift was pretty prevalent. Uh, we are now seeing, and you mentioned it, where I think customers, a lot of customers are being just forced into the digital transformation uh, journey right now, really to like, well, everyone's home. Like, how do you serve your customers with this? And they're really, that last mile of change is, is coming very quick to them. And I think we're seeing a lot of similarities with that technology base, like the same challenges that the tel telecom providers hit can be applied to other industries, whether it's manufacturing, other areas in this. Generally, we call it like, it's that edge focused area. You don't have an infrastructure that runs in one place. You're having to aggregate a lot of it. Um, we call this our hybrid cloud work and OpenShift is really Red Hat's hybrid cloud platform there. Yeah, uh, you know, so often uh, we we talk about some of the hype that goes around certain words. Uh, you know, I think about cloud native. Uh, you know, we've been talking about cloud for for so many years. Red Hat, of course, partners with you know all the various solutions out there. Um, but right when things need to get need to get done, it's how does it help businesses? How does it help IT react? Uh, to the business, and you know, how do we make sure we stay in business? Uh, so, you know, what, how, how has that conversation of cloud native uh, changed, and where's where's Red Hat, uh, you know, fitting in that discussion? Yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, not the best circumstance, but I think one of the things that's been really prevalent is um, when you see this pullback in some cases to data centers. That conversation about did I build my apps to a standard that I've got to cut costs. Can I move them to a lower cost infrastructure for me like right now in a week or two weeks? Um, that's becoming pretty critical where you know, we've, we've believed in that model for a long time of you know, uh, whether it's cloud native services, building them to a platform that gives you that flexibility. That has become a pain point for customers right now. And, and one of the nice things, we've seen this in some government services where if they're built on OpenShift, even on premise, they're on the other side of that where they're having to scale these services massively. They're able to take the same app, same platform, go out to public cloud providers and actually help fulfill that scale. Um, customers, I think that built to that pattern, if they're contracting for a bit or doubling down on their data center, they have the same thing. They can pull back from the public cloud if they need to, but that, that app, Portability has 
gone from being a you know, real like secondary tertiary concern to being a critical aspect of cost savings for just a lot of enterprises right now and in a shockingly short period of time. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's interesting. When you talk about engineering groups and how they're building product, uh, most of the development teams I talk to were distributed uh, before uh, this event happened. And yes, there's some adjustments that need to happen. Uh, I think Red Hat has some uh, almost unique capabilities uh, compared to some others out there because you know not only do you have your development teams, but of course everything that Red Hat's doing is open source. So Matt, mm -hmm. I'd love to hear your viewpoint as to, you know, as you think about your product roadmap and what's going to happen in 2020. How do the communities, and there's been a number of course key uh, uh, acquisitions that Red Hat has done uh, over the years. And so talk a little bit about that dynamic and you know, how much this affects uh, what, what, what's happening and you know, how, how this uh, helps Red Hat both put together uh, the products and the portfolio uh, that it offers. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, you're right. We're we are incredibly lucky, just business model wise, and even as a starting point. Where um, on the engineering team, over half of our engineering team is remote to begin with, and then on top of that, we work with open source communities where we're still just the minority presence in most of those. And so you're working with team members that you've never met. So you could say the bulk of the work that we did was really distributed. So it wasn't a uh, just a huge system shock of everybody stay productive, um, stay from home. The second part that's great, our strategy overall really doesn't change for us because we're we're seeing a lot of pressure applied to it where customers, maybe a three-year plan to get there is becoming their six-month plan. Uh, but in terms of running infrastructure in these combinations, being able to run it in your data center, being able to scale out to public clouds and do that consistently, um, that hasn't changed for us. Uh, we will, you know, we are refining areas of making sure that we contribute and really double down on infrastructure, like mission critical infrastructure like telcos right now, because they're certainly going through the scale. They're going to push for things like 5G. Uh, we want to make sure we're doing everything we can for that. But we were already working pretty closely with them. So, not a huge strategy shift for us. It's, uh, how can we just really focus these on the value that customers need right now? We're excited about, uh, if you look in the efficiency area, some of these combinations of what we're doing with Ansible, it's pretty critical to users. Like if you take a RHEL user that's running a data center's worth of gear and they need to remotely be able to manage it, control it, optimize it, because they can't get people there, um, great solutions around Ansible. So we're, we're really pushing down that path. Um, then if you look at the other areas, like with OpenShift, some of the management work we've been doing, or the scaling areas, if you go through serverless models or pipelines, like if you're in the shipping industry or you're in pharmaceuticals working on vaccines, they have massive scaling needs right now. And so they're pushing very hard on, on that sort of new technology. All right. Well, Matt, there is one technology area that I'd love to get your viewpoint on. Uh, talked a little bit about in the keynote, definitely. I know there's plenty of breakouts and we actually have a few CUBE interviews uh, digging into, uh, of course, you know, Kubernetes. Uh, the latest is going on with OpenShift and a big piece is, is the uh, virtualization with, with OpenShift virtualization. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, you're one of the founding members of the OpenShift team. So as you know, you look at you know, bare metal, virtualization, containers versus VMs, public cloud on-premises, you know, give us your viewpoint as to you know, really where we are in 2020 and how some of that journey has changed over time and how Red Hat you know, might have a slightly different view of how things should be built and where the future should go com compared to others in the industry. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm really excited about this area because if, if you look at, you know, Red Hat's sort of view on this is that we can run Kubernetes sort of as the thing that directly runs on Linux and, and bare metal. And for us, that's OpenShift and RHEL. And it's, it's very powerful because if you look at what virtualization came from, it was machines got really strong. And so we needed to carve them up into smaller pieces to make them manageable. Uh, 
that's what Linux containers do is they take a machine, they carve them up into these units and let you use all of the power on the physical hardware. And we know this world from RHEL for us. Like that's what Linux does. It lights up hardware. Um, so I think the norm in the industry for the last few years was people would still carve up machines with virtualization. Then they would run containers on top. And virtualization was sort of your, your main substrate. And there were some challenges with that. Like containers, it's harder for them to move across those boundaries. Like VMs are isolated for a reason. Uh, we actually think, and it was an upstream project called Kubevert. Again, we saw this in the telcos pretty early where they were putting OpenShift on bare metal, on gear itself. And they were driving to run virtualization inside of that. And then really you had the flexibility of containers carving up the hardware, and we need to bring VMs in, uh, we can run VMs inside of containers. And that, it's the opposite of how most people think about it, but it, it gives you the best of both worlds. Because we look at Kubernetes, it, it is sort of that next generation infrastructure layer. And you can fit VMs very nicely into that. That's what we're doing with container-native virtualization. Um, gives you good cost benefits on that. And also, if you're going from a virtualized world to a container world, um, you're optimizing towards that destination with OpenShift. And it's, it's just, it is neat technology because I think most customers, they still have a ton of VMs out there. So even if they're bought off on an OpenShift path, how do they bring VMs into that story? And so that, um, as of now, like that, that's something we're enabling them to be able to do. So. Cool technology. I'm, I'm excited about that. And again, it has a, a great telco focus for us right now. But I think this is one where it'll have broad reach across enterprise users too, just that are already down this journey and need to accelerate it for cost savings. That's uh, a great solution there. Yeah, uh, definitely from what, what I've learned, it's uh, pretty empowering to really help that application development team uh, understand uh, really those, those cloud native architectures, if you will. And, one of the challenges of VMs was uh, used to just kind of stick the application in there and not think about it anymore. And that does not meet uh, where really companies are going. Uh, so, all right, Matt, got to ask you the last question since you own product and technologies. T talk about some of the, you know, the tough areas. Where is Red Hat really working with the community uh, to help really improve things for the ecosystem and for customers as you look out through the rest of 2020? Yeah, I, I think. Looking out for the rest of 2020, it's sort of, it's picking focus areas because the, the most challenging thing, you know, the nice part, especially at Red Hat too, there is a ton of goodwill. Of like, what can we jump in, help? What can we do? And when we looked at it, a lot of our customers, they're doing awesome things. And they're, they're sort of in the middle of the crisis. So a big part of our focus has been making sure we help them. Uh, one of my favorite stories, it's, close to really like Red Hat's ethos is uh, Medtronix. They're a ventilator. Uh, they manufacture ventilators. They open source their ventilator designs so that companies like Ford or Tesla could actually, you know, they're retooling their factories to build them. Medtronix open sources so they could actually get the designs to build. And um, when we see those things, uh, it's just awesome. Like those are great. Like that is what for us open source is built on. And we are really doubling down to make sure that whether it is a support case or a bug or a problem, or we have to jump in and give them engineering expertise to help them scale. Uh, that has been our focus probably for most of 2020. Um, in doing that well, I think our, our challenge, our hard part is just bringing focus from all of the cool things we could do to what are the things that are going to have the most impact right now, which is, um, it's tough, but we have a lot of them. Like on the technology side, we have, you know, the virtualization areas, some of the, the work around Quarkus, like how do we bring Java workloads into this Kubernetes world? Like really good things there, but I'm sure what we know um, right now will unfortunately probably change again in another couple of months. We just have to be really flexible to uh, keep prioritizing folks on it. All right, well, Matt Hicks, uh, you know, taking a new leadership role is always challenging, uh, especially in, uh, in, in these times. So uh, 
want to wish you best of luck. Uh, and of course, okay. thank you to the team. Uh, we always really appreciate the partnership with Red Hat uh, to be able to share this content uh, with the communities. And uh, always good to talk to you, Matt. Sounds good. It's great talking to you too. And maybe next year it'll be we'll be back to uh, the in person. Absolutely. All right. Lots more coverage from Red Hat Summit 2020. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching the Cube.